And so we've asked you all to uh, kind of in see this thing and, uh, and uh, keep you all pretty well entertained. And I would like to introduce him to you. Uh, it's pretty hard to introduce somebody that everybody knows. <laughs> you got to admit, everybody knows this guy. you got to admit, he adds a lot of color. you got to admit that he's everywhere where anything has happened. He has a tremendous amount to the hobby of reenacting, not only in this century, but in another century. He devotes probably the greater share of his time to this hobby, either up front or behind the scenes. Uh, if I was to go on and on and, and uh, go through all the accolades, we'd be here until day like tomorrow morning. We don't want to do that, so I guess what I would like to say is that I would like to introduce to you a man that I've known for a lot of years, hold the utmost respect for, and call a shoe friend of mine, Jim McKay. Thank all of you for coming tonight. That's why I picked you. No, it's good to hear you. Don't like it, Mark. Are you going to do this all night or am I just going to start off the back? Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. I'd like to introduce to you, in my turn, the wild colonial boy. from that point. So if there's anything that you need, <coughs> strike that. If you need anything, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start from right this point here. Yeah. If you were like me and forgot your plates and utensils, the lady has some plastic that you can eat off of. If you're a good enough reenactor, you can make it to the point where you can be eating off plastic and still convince everybody that you're authentic. <laughs> One of the things that happens in reenactment, and I think that I want to take a couple of minutes to talk about this before we continue. Reenactment is really important because the written word does not impart to those people interested in the history of our country the things, the aspects, and the attributes of those people who were really here and doing what we are trying to show that they did. There were scoundrels. There were those of great honor. There were those who struggled or what they believed in. And there were those who were caught in all of this who probably wished after it started that it never had happened to them. And then there were those who saw fit to impose that kind of misery on people of the provinces because they were no better than did not deserve any better than what the king prescribed. <laughs> now, those beliefs <coughs> brought us to a new country, but it didn't do it easily. It brought us a whole new set of heroes that we celebrate to this day. But what is more important than any of that is that those heroes, General Washington, pilot commanders, 
unit leaders, civilians, each had their own way of looking at this, and it is that which we bring to the public. Attitude, belief, assurance. That's why I'm a reenactor, and that's why I like to be with reenactors, because they do what I do, and they do it damn well. Go no Harvey. Here, here. Oh, Will we actually start playing for you? I'm going to introduce a few of the guys in the band. Rob Payton on the fiddle in the end here. Roger Honeywell and Lauren. Jay Payton on the box between uh, Concertina and Hammer Dulcimer. Myself, Joseph Morneau, with anything that I can get my hands on. Jim Gregory, who will be leading everybody to dance this evening. And I thought I'd also warn you that Dave has brought some CDs for sale for another band that he plays with that we'll be playing with during our break. It's quite excellent. You might want to talk to him at some point uh, this evening. And I also have some flyers for anybody who wants to know about this band um, for future gigs, bar mitzvahs, Christmas, uh, what have you. And funerals, and we're good at funerals. And if there are any other uh, aspiring musicians out there, I'd like to speak with you at some point this evening. And other than that, but... And what we're going to do is we're going to start at that end of the table. Both sides turn yourself. And we'll start with the tables that I designate to go first. One. Oh, that's by a powerful ally who bought into the idea of freedom. Now, I will not say that they bought into the idea of freedom without some idea of gain. Because gain, as my pirate captain friend has said, <laughs> is at the root of most human endeavor. <laughs> However, the fact that they did so, and others did not, I asked our French representative to give to that point the toast to the French allies of the continent. Can we hear it for General Rochambeau? Huzzah! Huzzah! Who would not be here tonight? We would be home celebrating an English holiday. It's a Louis. Bankrupt in the country. To this trio, I bring His Majesty the King. His King, His Majesty George III, who loved his colonies because they were his, who cherished his colonies because they were his. <laughs> <laughs> who ruled the colonies as he saw fit because they were his to rule, or so he thought. Five or six centuries in the past had led him to believe that he could do this with impunity. But there was on the horizon a storm, and that storm was driven by individuality. George did not recognize that. However, it was the king who created the colonies. It was the king who, in his way, nourished the colonies. 
And it was the British and the king in his way who gave us the beginnings of our language, our art, our law, and our military accomplishments. And in the years prior to 1750, those famous officers who did so damn well in the revolution learned their trade under British officers who were defending the colonies of His Majesty the King. And so I ask you all to join me in this toast to those points, King George III, long may he rule. For the king. <laughs> One of the problems that we all face is trying to put friendship back into a red coat after five o'clock. <laughs> I have been challenged in many an event because I wear a red coat wear a red coat to this extent, I will not wear a blue coat under any circumstances or under any event. I am British. And as long as I do first person in an event, I am British. I am a loyal British officer. You may not like some of the things that the king does keep my mouth shut about it and do it anyway, because that's my job. Just as many people did not like some of the things that were going on in the New Republic, they also dealt with it as I have dealt. However, after 5 o'clock, I'm an American. I would ask all of you to remember, remember that. I served in the submarine force for 20 years for the right to wear a red coat. Right? If I wish to wear a red coat, I bloody well will do it. Oh, I have some regrets, and all of us have them. All of those who are my compatriots who wear red coats have them. What is one of those regrets? Well, I'll tell you. One of them, and I've already talked to the general about it this evening, is that I don't get to be as close to a great reenactor as many of you are close to General Washington. Now, that's a real problem with me, but I can learn to live with it. I don't get to be in an outstanding unit like the 6th Connecticut yes. and work with my friend Richard Swartwout, old Swarty as they call him. I can't be part of his unit. The best I can be is somebody that beats the hell out of him once a year at East Ham. <laughs> would like to be like Major Hayes, who was a great Indian, French and Indian War commander at a time when it was all right to be in a red coat. I don't know what happened at what time I was going to join Major Hayes' unit, but the 42nd got to me first. It's the kilts and the hose, I think. <laughs> Well, I don't get to do that. You still got the damn best damn legs, James. Yeah. <laughs> best skirt. Hey, Jack, pick his name. We don't get his name. <laughs> but I ask you all to remember that in the things that we do in reenactment, that we all seem wish to portray once again those things in reenactment which as best we can tell, actually happened here. Why is the blacksmith over here upset at a red coat? Well, it may be because he can't cut down any of the trees in the woodlot that belongs to him because they're more than two and a half feet through at the butt, and I have to give him permission, and he's not going to sell them to the Royal Navy, so I ain't going to let him cut it. Okay? So he didn't like me. Tough. <laughs> but at 5 o'clock, I don't have anything more to say about his woodlot. I ask you to remember that. 
I'm going to go ahead now, and we're going to have a few more uh, tunes from the Wild Colonial Boys. And then when you guys get sick and tired of listening to music, let me know, and we'll get started with the rest of the evening. Thank you very much for your attention.
So in order to celebrate that, what we do here is we do something time-honored. We have a raffle. And the raffle consists of those things which are brought to this place by those of us who are producing things in and of ourselves and our own skill. And all the chicken is gone. My hostess tells me that all of the raffle tickets have been sold. She also, she also informs me while well, she's telling me where to go. She also informs me that they had laid in an extra supply and you may have buy them up too. So thank you very much. Dear Lesson Oil. You want to run or what? Okay, we're going to run. No, we're going to run. Yeah. You don't have to stick it. Tell me before I get back. Oh, <laughs> the number is seven four two five one eight. Seven four two five one eight. Bingo! Okay, can you hold this one? Leon, can you hold this? The next item for raffle is a sewing box donated by Lynn Anderson. And inside there's uh, a rack for all every kind of thing. It's a nice clean box for a sewing box. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Summer 741 700. 741 700. <laughs> Something to do on those long night watches, right, Bozen? <laughs> the next is a entitled A Man's Gift. What other kind of a gift is there? <laughs> and the number is yeah. 742 038. Ah, bring it, bring it. 742 
It can also be used by the commanding officer of a vessel to keep his post in their line. Made by the Toad Hill Ironworks, Kaukishi Forge, Don McKinnick. Number 742 256 Going three times. Pick another ticket. I'm not looking. I'm not supposed to look. Seven four two. Oh seven five. Seven four two. Oh seven five. Now the next one here is a series of tools. Now the pirates probably won't want to have involved with it because these are delicate tools. They are handmade tools by William Hayes, Vernon Forge. And I got to tell you that I don't think I've ever seen a set of tools quite like this. And the person who, I mean that in a complimentary way. I think the person who gets this will be very pleased. 741. 932 <laughs> 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 The next one is a open front gown with a stomacher. Revolutionary War clothing by Doc is accurate and practical. Doll's dress. Fits American girl doll, 18 inches, Dot Fisher. Number seven four one five two seven seven four one five two If you would please, since the boatswain was so disappointed about not getting that, would you please let him just feel it?
That's the secret. Stoner Jim and Paula Marasco. Square box. Seven four two three three one. Seven four two. Three, three, one. You have to tell what's in the box, however. What's in the box? The next is a video entitled February Frolic. 1997, 1998, 1999, by Jair. 741-691. 741-691. You got this. Oh, this next item is a man or woman's gift. Almost good enough to beat a potion over the head with. Number? 742-869. Next item is a custom-made shirt. Which is very, very fine material to fit in this envelope. Actually, a certificate donated by Diane Bell. Yay! 741-392. 741-392. Oh. 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 He needs it, too. This next item is a wooden ornament and box. And they look like continental soldiers on the clothespins. This is quite appropriate. Kathleen <laughs> Redke, donor. Seven four one two five six. Seven four one two five six. Madam, you have just broken the heart of Mr. Richard Swartwout, who was hoping to advance the number of the six Connecticut by at least three closures. <laughs> <laughs> Now this next item, I want you to keep a close eye on the pirates I would because they probably will go completely hog wild with this. One of them is a piece of ink, and one of them is a dollar. Which probably is the sum total of their tent in the year. <laughs> Donor, we have The spongeman was a bit weak. <laughs> <laughs> You ready for this, Cam? All right, sir. <laughs> Seven four two oh, one oh one. Seven four two one oh one. Oh, oh come on, somebody's got to go for it. <laughs> Seven four two 
Who's that, sir? He's got a pistol drawn now. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Find out when they leave for the car. <laughs> Who uh who won the video? Right here, sir. Come, here. Come on up here, buddy. We have made a, a serious error. Oh error. Get your butt up here. <laughs> We made a serious error. One of the, uh, oh, the items that could have gone is with the, um, with the, uh, uh viewer. Oh, a TV! Uh, is a little toy, a little toy and a red hat. Oh. Uh, the toy is to keep him busy on long night watches, and the red hat is to let everybody else know when he's on the prop. The next is a custom made shirt certificate by Diane Bell. Yay! Seven four two. Seven four two one eight one. Winning, so I'm coming over here. The next <laughs> item is a Celtic cross. Number 741 987. Just for Our shirt goes to the Ginger's cat. General's taking the tank. This next item is a man's gift. I have to know because it takes a man to read it. Women were not educated for that. I'm glad I'm not riding home with you, sir. <laughs> Seven four two. Oh, yeah. Four eight one. Oh. Seven four two. Yeah. Four eight one. Can't you count any higher? <laughs> <laughs> Seven four two four eight one. Going once. Going twice. Going three times. Give me another ticket. No ticket. No ticket. No ticket. No ticket. Second ticket number seven four two four six eight. Seven four two four six eight. Seven four two. Four six eight. So we won. Oh, 
This is a felt line box. That doesn't indicate what's inside of it, but it's a felt line box. Made to be felt. Donated by Rick Howe. <laughs> After this, Rick, uh, give me a buzz. I'd like to see what, um, how I can get one of those boxes like that. That's kind of a neat box. All right, sir, come down here. We'll give you a bit of a buzz. <laughs> you didn't hear me correctly. I said, I need to see you. That means you come and see me. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, no problem, sir. 741 460. Oh. 741 460. Again? Oh, I mean, huzzah! Are you being a candle table? No, sorry. Wrong one. Oh, wow. Wow. That's the last time I pushed him to turn the light. Sorry, sir. No, 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 sir. <laughs> Seven four two oh, yeah. six three one. Oh. Seven four two <laughs> six three one. Yeah. Oh, you beat a kill. Hey, boy, it's me. So this is a book. And I'm not sure whether it's a picture book or a, or a, a recipe book. It's called America Eats. And the subtitle is Forms of Edible Folk Art. I'm not sure whether you eat it or you simply cook it and then put it up on a mantle. It was donated by Jim and Paul Marasco. The person who wrote it is William Lloyd Weaver. Yay! Seven four two. Yeah. Ooh. Eight nine seven. Oh, Ooh. Seven four two. What? Eight nine seven. What? Oh. 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 Was another of these infamous drawn boxes. Oh! oh. Donated by Jim and Paul and Rob. What's inside? What's inside? What is it felt? Same as everyone. Well, it probably isn't anything you could use or want. <laughs> 742. Oh. 747. 742. 742. I was willing to give her an out. Felt mine. Well, there's many things there. You got a big long one there, sir. <laughs> this next item is um, <laughs> something of. Unusual um, layout. It's leather, roll of leather, donated by Gail McKinney. The leather is smooth on the one side, rough on the other, which would be extremely suitable for an officer's uh, cartoon box or something similar. Cartoon <laughs> box? Number. You tore off the end of it. I'm going to mumble, mumble. 742. Nine four two. Nine four two. Seven four two. 
Oh, don't give it to Washington's Army, they'll need it for God's sake. <laughs> Come on. Oh, that's all right. Just dry it off in a pan. It's a man's gift. I know the person who made this very well. Um, the person who made this made this as the very first project in his reenactment career. 13 years ago. Eerie, eerie. Shut up. What um, it is kind of a combination of available materials and a unique idea. I've never seen anything else like it. I'm not sure if that's good or bad. But I wanted someone here to have the opportunity to use it effectively. Since I'm the only Brit, and I'm not going to get a chance at it, <laughs> this goes with all my love and affection. Seven four one. Hey! Seven one five. Yes, we have it. Yes. Seven four one. Seven one five. Sorry, people. I gotta tell you that that particular gift could not have gone to a better person. Uh -huh. You open it and show it to him. I'm right, I'm right. I think he's been paying the call that I said in favor to. Oh! <laughs> I know I'm being selfish about this, but this is uh, kind of a part of my history, and I value these people here more than anyone else. Well, good. Now, for God's sake, watch where you draw the damn thing. <laughs> well done, Lieutenant. <laughs> Bounty. By the way, keep your hands off that, Captain. That's only a lower deck weapon. Okay? <laughs> we'll have to tip it, sir. Yeah, right. The next is a very, very beautiful silver plated. Overblocks by Jean, Jim Gregory. The reason I was a little bit taken by that is I have one like this at home that we use for tea. So it can also be used as a tea box. <laughs> 742. Oh. Yeah. 080. Oh. 742. 080. Oh. Over here. Yeah. Yeah. Box now. Way to go, girl. We can keep our stash in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> when gold is blue, you want to take care of those people. Oh, are they sharp? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
The photographs on the wall are photographs of events that we have done in the last year. Anybody who would like to have one of those photographs, you may take it with you. But the donation for um, recompense for those people who took the pictures will be in this basket on the box. I believe that's it, right? So like this. Thank you very much. And let's return now to the dancers. All right, we got some requests, but we're going to play anyway. Make way, that new couple will crash way down. New top lady, take your line like the shepherd leading the flock. Take them all the way around the block, and then the gentlemen join hands and lead. Meet with a dose I go. And a turn with a right elbow. Then a left elbow. Two hands round. Top couple sashay down. All right, honor your partner for a moment. That dance is going splendidly. Why would anyone want to tinker with it? <laughs> well, I got an idea or two. Uh, yeah, I know. It takes a stinker to tinker. Is that what you said there? Yeah. You're probably right. Okay. You know that elbow turn. That elbow turn. That's a very English thing to do. Um, from the French, though, we, we got uh, uh, an idea to carry a little further. Some of you, I think, know the, the move called the Alamand. The Alamand. And you do, try this with your partner, you do link right elbows, your left hand is free, so just place the left hand behind your back. If you start with the right elbow, or you can reverse it. And then with your right hand, you can extend it forward and lay it on top of your partner's free hand. And you're bound up like the two halves of a pretzel there. And when you turn, you actually get a rather graceful turn out of it. Switch now, reverse Alamon, the other elbow, and you really do hook the elbows, your free hand behind your back, and you reach through to take your partner's free hand. Wow. Okay, this is, yeah, before there were limbo contests, I think we had the Alamon contest. Try that once again. You link elbows, free hand behind your back. And then you got it. You got it. Okay. That is especially nice if you gaze into your partner's eyes as you turn, which is very romantic, and it, it also relieves the pressure on the shoulder. Don't get sick. Don't, don't be queasy. All right. So, um... Where we were doing the elbow turns, we're working the elbow. So work their magic there. Luna, Luna, on the head tempo. We can work their way in between a lot of trees. When it comes to you, you can start to pop them. Now to those all of our first you make any right elbow. Top couple, hang on, you're gonna stand so you can be able to play. Here it comes. You and the young lady, these the ladies are out of the dish now. Over on the river, you're rounding through. Ladies are heading up home. So the dish feet are now the dish feet up. Thank you. 
except I got three holes in my back, okay? The winner gets to uh, kiss the red coat. And the ring, right, and the ring. Come on, let's uh, get out there. They get out there. They didn't bother to drop sand on the floor, guys, people, so no blood, please. Get out there. Get out there. It might be a wise idea if you leave your weapons at the table. I can't be serious enough. It might be a good idea to leave all edged weapons at the table. Okay. One of the rules about the chair. One of the rules about the cakewalk is this. Now this is going to get a little exciting. 
later on. So I want you all to remember, and for some of you people, this may be a first, the term fair play. Okay? No, uh, last two years ago, two years ago, we had, in somebody's anxiety, they pulled a chair out from underneath someone else. And um, so we don't want, you know, don't get carried away. I understand this humor, this humorous boatswain, just don't get carried away. <laughs> okay? Everybody understand? You're going to let you, where the dance master go? We don't we take care of it from here. We don't, oh, you take care of it. We don't need that guy. Oh, God. <laughs> You're a you should have warned me, right? Okay, here we go. <laughs> wait a minute, wait, 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 we got two people. Uh, everybody stand up and remove one chair. Two chairs. Remove one chair, we're going to change direction. Everybody go the other way. Wait, 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 all right, the dead shall rise. Remove a chair, please. What the heck was that? All right, everybody up. Pull a chair. Not on the floor, the floor doesn't count. All right, when you get up, let's go back counterclockwise again, please. Pull a chair. Okay. All right. Who's sitting and who's not? All right. Oh, oh. Get up, line up the chairs, pull a chair. Everybody, let's go clockwise and we'll stay like that for a second. Clap 
Stops don't count. All right, all rise. Pull a chair. chair taker so please nobody else uh, yank the chairs out. Oh, right, right. Staley's moderately organized so there's less blood on the floor to mop up when you all go home. Oh, all rise. It doesn't matter, he knows where you were. All right. <laughs> a gentleman, you know? All And we realize it's modern times and that stuff is okay now, but not for the Yeah, don't ask, don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> All rise. I don't swim that way. <laughs> Good win. <laughs> All right. Very bad. Very bad. Be graceful, be graceful. All right. <laughs> 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 Uh-oh. 
All right. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, now is the part where it gets bloody. All rise. One, two, three, go. You see, bad karma. <laughs> All right. Up, oh, up, oh, boys, up. Oh. All rise. No, you can't rest now. The infamous All right. Oh. This is going to get dangerous. No touching the chairs. Don't go to sleep tonight. Now you realize you're going to lose either way, buddy. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> what a neat cake. <laughs> what do you say we do some more dancing? <laughs> yeah, you can get to the chair if you want. Not quite as bloody as the one that turns across. The tempo left hand back. Number one couple, feet down the center, down the center, down they go. Then you'll sashay home, cast off one place, meet the next with a right hand star, right across. Looks good, couple left hand back. Number one's down the center, one's the partner, down you go. Then you can sashay home, cast around those neighbors, and on to the next right hand star. Right hands across you go, left hands back. It's down the center, one's me down and down they go. You sashay home, cast off one place to meet the next right hand star. And I left hand back. Is down the center, down the center, down the go. Sashay home, 
That's one place to meet the next Euro star. Right hands across you go. Left hand back. Down the active ski you got to go. Stashing home around that couple you cast off. Greet the next to the right cross. Ambassador, myself. 
and Mary with a right hand to partner. Give right hand to partner, pull by so you change places. You're on the wrong side of the set, but your neighbor is there. Reach a left hand to your neighbor. You can let go of anybody else. Just give a, let go of, of the others, a partner. Give a left hand to the neighbor, look squarely at them. Change places with them, much as you did partner. Now look squarely at partner. Change by... You knew you were one last opportunity. I admire you're trying to take it. Okay. Uh, all right. The top four will show. They're going to give right hand to partner, pull by, or change places. Look for the neighbor with the left hand. Just use the left hand. Change places. Look for partner. Change places. Look for a neighbor. Change places. And you do, what, what are the hands? Right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. There, there, it's kind of tempting to think you're turning around and around a lot, but... Uh, let me let me jump in once. I'll see if I can do it with without extra turns. I'll, I'll be what, the least fancy dancer there, but watch what I can do. Okay, here's the right to left. Right hand partner. I'm going to look for my neighbor. Pull by. I'm going to look for my partner. Pull by. Look for my neighbor. Pull by. As long as I look for him, these are the rights and lefts. Oh, we do have another set forming up. Okay, great. We promise riches. Money in both pockets. All right. Uh, that's the last figure we do. That's the last figure. And if you can think partner, neighbor, partner, neighbor, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. It'll get you, it'll get you through it. All right. We're adjusting the lines. We can use some more recruits in this line, I think. It's always good to have the lines about equal length. Gives everybody equal chances, and I know how long to tell a band to go. That means you're all even, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the other thing we'll do, um, since we're going to be dancing uh, uh, a lot of figures for four people, let's take hands four from the top of the set. This four, that four. You find out whom you're dancing with to begin, and this also really defines do you start life as a number one or... You know, number ones work their way down. Number twos are working their way up to the top. They promote. Okay, now the money figure. This dance, actually, in a way, it has two pockets, and you can kind of jingle the money in the two pockets. We know who the number one couple is. They join hands with the number a two lady, number two lady. Make a little circle of three. And before you, you turn that circle... You do the balance step. Yep. Yeah, some sort of balance in and out. Something like a little polka step. Uh, if we could recruit one more couple, it would it would even things out. And if we don't, don't run away, because the action will come down to you pretty quick. Okay, so you balance, are you? Let the, let the, let the, let the balance again and circle left. The three of you circle left, go round, leaving that number two lady in her place and turning your attentions to her partner, the number two gent. And also with him, join hands and balance that circle. Balance, are you? Let the, let the, let the, let the, let the, let the, circle left, you circle left, let the, let the, let the, let the, let the, and leave him in place. The number two couples will kind of hold uh, the fort as the ones go down the center, much like we did before. One's down the center. Face your partner, you'll sashay back. Cast off one place. And the last figure, the last figure with that couple, it's coming, the rights and lefts. Remember your partner, remember your lady in place, and balance the jet, you balance. And again, circle left, leave the gen in place, go down the center, one's down the center, coming back, cast round one, lights and lefts, right to your partner, left to the neighbor, his partner, neighbor, balance the next lady, balance the next lady.